I've played a lot of RPGs in my time, but there is one that is the most groundbreaking RPG to ever hit the planet that I've never played until now, and it's Generation 1 Pokemon. Now don't get it twisted, I actually love Pokemon, and I've played Pokemon for very many years, but my first Pokemon game wasn't actually until Generation 4 with Pokemon Platinum, so I've never gotten to experience Generations 1, 2, or 3. And, you know, people talk about the heyday of Pokemon, how it was amazing back then, and I was never allowed to have it when I was a kid. So recently, because I've been playing a lot of older retro games through ways of the things like the Miu Mini and my Steam Deck, I thought maybe now's the time for me to explore Pokemon Generation 1 and see what the fuss was about. And I tell you what, I kind of get it. I've also been streaming Pokemon Generation 1. Like, I've been playing Pokemon Blue on my own time, but I've also been playing Pokemon Red on stream with a friend of mine who's grown up with Pokemon since he was very, very young. And we're doing this bug-only run, and I've never played the game before, really, so I'm trying to be experimenting and trying out these new things. I know what the Pokemon do, but finding all the janky things that Generation 1 did that the later ones didn't has been extremely interesting to me. Right, you pick. Uh, the one behind you, on the right. This one? Yep. Nope. <laughs> oh. Do you want to try the top one? Nope. <laughs> How do we get that wrong? Take That's the easiest one to get is when it's Take in the corner. Take this away from me. I'm <laughs> right. curling up in the fetal position. I've had enough. Except for that puzzle. That puzzle can do one. So while I've never finished Generation 1, and let alone Generation 2 and 3, maybe we'll get to that at some point soon, I hope we will, because I'll be really enjoying myself, is I wanted to get to the core of what made Generation 1 so special for so many people. And I think that this comes down to something that retro, if you will, games had, that modern games just don't, and it's that sense of discovery. Now, I never really looked at Generation 1 of Pokemon because I just haven't needed to or cared to until now because all the modern ones were out. But back when Generation 1 came out in the 90s, you couldn't. Like, you don't have the internet to spoil the list of Pokemon that's come out. You don't have the internet to tell you where to go and how to do things. And I think that that's part of what makes up the magic of a lot of these older RPGs, certainly. And because there were so few choices, I mean, Christ, I cannot believe how few moves the Pokemon in Generation 1 learn. Like, I was sitting there with my Paris going, oh, so what, when does it learn its last moves? It's like level 30. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> when does it, things, like, stop? And it's much earlier than it is in the later games. And I find that really interesting. Not to mention how breakable that game is. There's so many little things in that game that make for such amazing conversation that you just can't really get from modern games. Well, unless you count the frame rate in Scarlet Violet. My point being is that like the conversations you could have had with Generation 1 revolved around rumor mills and, oh, I bet you haven't figured out the Mew glitch yet and stuff like that. And that's because back then you didn't have the ability to know instantly just with a quick google search or a quick reddit thread to kind of go oh well that's how everything works there was schools that would kind of tell you whether something was real or not this also comes back to like final fantasy 7 and the times where you could save Aerith and it never happened or tomb raider where the nude lara croft <laughs> milled around for years and it wasn't real but i'd never got to experience any of that just through sort of third parties but in, in, like playing it now, I, I can still feel that magic that's there, even though I don't have the nostalgia goggles for it. Playing it in a unique way with bugs only as well has been really fun. And this started when I saw my friend uh, Alex, who you can see in the clips with me streaming. He, he does bug runs on all of his Pokemon games. And I loved this idea and I was always asking questions. I was like, oh, so why are you using Beedrill and Butterfree so late into the game? It's like, oh, because Twin Needle is really good. And... I'm like, Twin Needle? That's not a move I've ever even heard of. <laughs> I've never really used Beedrill in the later games, let alone Twin Needle. I don't even know what that is. So it just sparked all these conversations, and I saw the game through someone else's eyes. And I'll be honest, I was a bit envious. So that's what led me to kind of go, maybe I should just experience this. And I'm so glad that I did. Now, I don't know if this is because I am an older gamer. I am a gamer in my mid-30s, so while I didn't get to play Pokemon Blue or Yellow or anything like that when I was young, 
it was still around and the zeitgeist was definitely there. Lots of kids had Game Boys in my school, I just didn't. So I got to sort of like experience the Pokemon card craze and everything, but I just bypassed it. So I don't know if it would still appeal the same way to a younger demographic, certainly one that's obsessed with TikTok and Fortnite, I'm not sure. But if you get a chance to experience like the original Pokemon games. There's so many of these retro devices that are around now, and I'm obsessed with all of them. I've been wanting to make videos for them for a while, but I've been taking a break from social media for a while. That's a video for another time. But I just, I'm so impressed with how well the original Pokemon games hold up, and I can't wait to explore all the glitches, all the crazy shenanigans. I've had people in my streams telling me about the fact that focus energy doesn't actually increase your accuracy, it decreases it, or for a critical hit rate rather, it decreases it. And there's a glitch Pokemon, even at, like, I mean, I've heard of missing no, but I don't know anything beyond that. And this discovery of how things work, I think there's a magic in that, that modern games just don't have anymore. So if you do play, Pokemon Red and Blue, or any retro game for that matter, try going into them blind. I think you'll find you'll experience them very differently than you would if you were following an online guide or even a video like this one. Now while I understand the love for Generation 1, I do think that the Gen 1ers, as it were, who talk about the Gen 1 Pokemon as being the only generation of Pokemon, everything else afterwards is terrible design. I'm like, you can't be turning around and telling me that Trubbish and Garbodor's rubbish, but see what I did there. Grimer and Muck exist, or that Magnemite and Magneton are amazing designs where something like Vanillish and Vanillux aren't. I mean, Generation 1 gave us Mr. Mime, that thing is cracked. But then again, some of the Gen 1 Pokemon are genuinely the best ones. Like, I don't think it's the best starter generation of them all, people will argue with me to the hells I'm sure, but I do think that some of the later generations are better. I will say I have a soft spot for some of the Pokemon in Gen 1, like Cloyster, I know I'm playing Bugs only, and that's making me really look forward to using Venomoth, just for argument's sake, to let you know where I am in the game right now, we've just hit Lavender Town. And if you want to follow the journey of me playing Generation 1 for the first time, do come and follow me on Twitch, where you'll find me playing the game with my friend and learning all of these things and going, what would you mean this doesn't work, etc. We're having a Kiki and it's a good time. But there's a lot of really cool Pokemon in Gen 1. I don't, I definitely think it's up there for the best legendaries. I mean, who doesn't love Articuno? I guess what I'm trying to say is, for all of you Gen 1ers out there who experience the magic of the first Pokemon games, as an RPG fan, I totally get it. Like, I can play Final Fantasy 1 to 6 over and over and over again. Chrono Trigger, I could play it over and over again. Early PS1 RPGs, I love them. And there's something about older games that I feel modern games don't necessarily click into in terms of that magic. And again, this could be coming down to my age, but I think the beauty is in the imperfections. All the little things you can do to break a lot of these older games are things you just can't really do anymore because once they find out you've done it, they patch it out. And that's not something you can do in Pokemon Red and Blue. I'm pretty sure Missing No's still walking around in there somewhere and I hope to find it someday so I can like experience the same way you guys have. So let me know, what are your fondest memories of Generation 1 Pokemon? Because I'm loving my time with it and I wanted to share that with all of you as the first video I've made in a little while and I will explain why I've been away another time. But just let me know what you guys think of it, because re-exploring it or learning about it and living vicariously through my audience and my friends has probably spawned a brand new favorite game for me. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to share with you guys today. I've played Generation 1, I haven't finished it, but I've played it and I get where you guys are coming from. I've actually kind of held a bit of a Pokemon bender at the moment. I've been very, very heavily exploring DGC recently. My friends and I went to the European Internationals and it's really inspired me to go, ooh, this looks like a lot of fun. But I'm balancing a lot of competitive games at the moment. I'm going up to EVO to play Tekken, Street Fighter and Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising in the summer. And I'm also waiting for Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail so that we can start raiding again and all of that stuff. But Pokemon has definitely become a new comfort zone for me. And who knows, maybe this is a new avenue that I'd like to explore as a content creator. And I'd love to share that journey with you if you'll have me. So thank you all very much for watching. Leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if this is something that you've enjoyed. And to all 
all of my patrons who have supported this channel, even though I haven't been the most active recently, for which I do apologize and I promise you I will explain, thank you very, very much. It means the world to me that there are people out there that still support this channel the way that they do. I've gone through many phases with this channel and it's such a journey as a, like to be a content creator and I have a lot to talk about when it comes to that stuff in the future. So just for now, thank you all very much for exploring this with me and I'm extremely grateful. Hope you've enjoyed the video and like I said, let me know what your favourite memories are of Generation 1 Pokemon. I'd love to hear about all that stuff so I can live vicariously through you too. Thanks again guys, I'll speak to you next time. Take care, bye.